And I'm here today with leaders who share that mission. Uh, Attorney General Austin Knutson, thank you for joining us. Montana Highway Patrol Colonel Steve Lavin, thank you. Uh, and Lee Johnson, Investigations Bureau Chief for the Division of Criminal Investigation. Thank you, Lee. Also, I'm proud to be here with five Montana Highway Patrol troopers uh, who serve our state sacrificially. Each of these troopers put their lives on the line each and every day to protect our communities. And I speak for all Montanans when I say we back the blue. They need and deserve our support now more than ever before. Violent crime recently has threatened the lives of law enforcement officers and Montanans alike. A recent string of shootings directed at law enforcement officers in Billings, St. Regis, and Great Falls bear this out. And tragically, the murder rate in Billings doubled in 2022 and is the second highest of the past decade, trailing only the 2020 pandemic year. Unfortunately, violent crime is not unique to our communities. It's rising across the entire country. Its impacts are far reaching on children, on families, and on our communities. And without question, this crisis requires urgent action from all of us. We've also seen a dramatic increase in drug-related and violent crime nationwide and in Montana since the pandemic. Three times the amount of fentanyl was seized in 2022 compared to 2021. Nearly an 11,000% increase in fentanyl seizures by anti-drug task forces since 2019. The fentanyl crisis is a direct consequence of our nation's insecure southern border. President Biden and members of Congress must secure our southern border now. The safety of our communities, our families, and our people depend on it. These drugs pouring into our communities from the southern border threaten public safety, tear families apart, and too often leave family members grieving for a loved one that they've lost. Rather than sitting idly by and wondering when violent and drug-related crime will go away, we are taking action. As you all know, there's a lot in our budget for Montana families. Our budget isn't just about cutting Montana's income and property taxes by over a billion dollars and using our surplus responsibly. It's also about making our families and communities stronger. Our budget spurs job creation, boosts education, and opens the door of greater opportunity for hardworking Montanans. But better opportunities from more good paying jobs to investments in education to greater access to affordable workforce housing don't mean much when Montanans look over their shoulders worried about the safety of their community. That's why building safer, stronger communities is another key pillar of our budget. To make Montana communities safer, we've made addressing this crisis a top priority. Over the last year, I've hosted eight public safety roundtables around the state. At them, I heard from local officials, law enforcement officers, treatment providers, and nonprofit leaders. They told me what's working and what's not working, and how we can partner to make our communities safer and stronger. We've also worked closely with Attorney General Knutson, who's been a real leader in confronting this problem. What we've heard informed our budget for Montana families. To ensure we're cracking down on criminals, our budget supports law enforcement. Our budget funds new highway patrol troopers, prosecutors, criminal investigators at the Montana Department of Justice. The criminal investigation agents will focus on drug trafficking, human trafficking, narcotics, major crimes, and crimes against children. And the new Highway Patrol troopers will combat violent crime and strengthen our drug interdiction programs. Unfortunately, the budget bill that was sent to the Senate does not fulfill our full request for public safety. Let's be clear, combating violent crime and building safer, stronger communities will take investments. Our budget makes those necessary investments. I urge the Senate to restore the new Highway Patrol troopers, prosecutors, and criminal investigators that we proposed and Montana needs. Let's get it done. I also want to commend Representative Marta Bergatolio, 
for advocating the use of marijuana revenue to boost funding for law enforcement, correctional officers, and treatment courts. Let's get that done, too. Now, I want to invite Attorney General Austin Knudsen to speak about the importance of these investments. General? Thank you, Mr. Governor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Governor Gianforte and his staff for putting this together. Thank Colonel Lavin of the Highway Patrol, DCI Narcotics, DC, excuse me, DCI Major Crimes Chief Lee Johnson uh, for everything these two gentlemen and their teams are doing to combat crime and get drugs off the street in Montana. Drugs and especially fentanyl are causing a crisis in Montana and it's resulting in a huge violent crime increase in the state of Montana as well. Uh, as the governor said, we know where these, drug, where these drugs are coming from. This is not a question. They're coming from the southern border. They're coming from primarily two Mexican, Mexican drug cartels who are openly operating in the state of Montana. Our anti-drug task forces just at the state of Montana have seized nearly 11,000% more fentanyl this year than we did in 2019. That is a staggering increase, and it shows us what the cartels are pushing and where the market is in Montana. And again, we know where this is coming from. Our opioid-related deaths, drug overdoses, and emergency calls for opioid overdoses in the state are also on the rise and at record levels. Montana's law enforcement officers are on the front lines fighting these new challenges. Uh, as Colonel Lavin and Chief Johnson will tell you today, they need more resources. We cannot keep policing in Montana like it's 1995. We have cartels operating in Montana, we have a huge drug problem, and we have a resulting violent crime problem uh, that is here, and we have to be realistic about how we're gonna face this. As the Attorney General, I'm very proud to oversee DCI and the Highway Patrol combating drugs and crime in Montana. DCI itself consists of six bureaus and investigates human trafficking, dangerous drug cases, major crimes, officer-involved shootings, uh, and again, we also assist with local law enforcement when, when asked to, to come in and help them out. Highway Patrol. They're patrolling Montana's thousands of miles of roadways every day. And more and more often, a simple traffic stop in Montana by the Highway Patrol is turning into a drug interdiction case, is turning into a, a major drug seizure case. I'm very proud to have worked with the governor, and I truly want to thank you, Mr. Governor, uh, for, for your assistance and, and your support working with the budget and with the legislature this session to fund, fully fund, law enforcement. Uh, I think we've made what is a modest, reasonable request to the legislature. We didn't come in and ask for more supervisors. We didn't come in and ask for more people sitting behind desks in Helena. We asked for law enforcement officers and for criminal prosecutors. That's what we need. We're hearing that all around the state. When I travel around the state of Montana and I talk to police chiefs, and I talk to sheriff's departments, and I talk to county attorneys, that's where the need is. Um, the, the personnel we asked for will be focused on fighting drugs, human trafficking, major crimes, and crimes against children. Unfortunately, a lot of these requests didn't make it into the budget when it left the House. Um, we're, we're pretty disappointed about that. We asked for three major crimes agents who are going to help us investigate crimes like the recent attacks we had on law enforcement just a couple of weekends ago. Uh, the Major Crimes Division at DCI is facing challenges like increased caseloads, causing them to have to decline requests for assistance from local law enforcement jurisdictions. Uh, they've had to drive long distances across the state. That increases our response time. We've had to pull agents off of existing investigations and send them to new investigations. Um, and, and you're going to hear Chief Johnson talk about that here shortly. Uh, we need the legislature to fully fund our requests for three narcotics agents. Uh, again, we are, we are facing an unprecedented flooding of fentanyl into our state, and our narcotics bureau is overwhelmed. Both these, are, these are the agents who are doing the undercover work, who are working with task forces, who are getting these drugs off our streets, but we need more of them. Uh, the legislature, unfortunately, also left out any funding for additional highway patrol drug interdiction troopers. 
Uh, and I want to be clear about that. We, we did not go to the legislature and ask for more highway patrol troopers to drive around and write tickets. We asked specifically for troopers to help with drug interdiction. We've got a drug interdiction and a criminal interdiction team at the highway patrol doing fantastic drug interdiction work, getting huge shipments of fentanyl off of our highways uh, almost daily. Those are the troopers that we asked for. And unfortunately, the, 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 the budget committee and the House of Representatives completely eliminated that request. Uh, so we would really pressure the, the Senate to put those troopers back in. Hi, the Highway Patrol is an active participant in national coordinated efforts to track shipments and intercept them with our partner agencies. And you're going to hear from Colonel Lavin about that here shortly. We also need the Senate to put back in the prosecutors that we asked for. Uh, criminal investigations mean nothing if we don't have prosecutors to finish those cases and put offenders in jail. Uh, and that's another real bottleneck we have in the state. Our, our, the, the Prosecution Services Bureau at the Department of Justice is overworked. We asked for a couple of specialized uh, drug prosecutors, specialized child, uh, child abuse invest uh, prosecutor. Um, those are requests that were all removed by the House of Representatives and, and we would ask the Senate to put those back in. So at the Department of Justice, we're going to continue to do our part to fight the crime and drug problem. I've made it the top priority of my administration. You know, multi-state civil litigation and settlements are fun to talk about, but at the end of the day, Montanans need to be safe and we need to enforce the law and keep criminals off the streets and highways in, Mon in Montana. We're going to continue to fight the Biden administration's absolutely disastrous border policies that are allowing these Mexican drugs to flood into our country. Um, we're going to, we, we've increased the number of DOJ narcotics and major case agents within our own ability to do so, but it's now time for the legislature to act. It's time for the legislature to step up, help us fund law enforcement in the state of Montana. Um, I'm committed to keep doing whatever it takes to keep Montana safe, and I'm, again, I'm, I want to thank the governor for his support uh, in, in, in getting that done. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Highway Patrol Colonel Steve Lavin. Good morning. I'm Colonel Steve Lavin, Chief Administrator of the Montana Highway Patrol. Thank you, Governor Gianforte, Attorney General Knudsen, DCI Investigations Bureau Chief Johnson, and distinguished guests. The men and women of the Montana Highway Patrol are encountering this violence every day. Our nation is seeing an, an increase in violent crime like never seen before. Montana is not exempt from this trend. Our troopers are encountering quantities of fentanyl nearly every day. Meth seizures are at a near record levels. High visibility traffic law enforcement is an effective tool for combating the drug trade and taking criminals off the streets. Many of these drug trafficking seizures involve firearms. Our great state of Montana is still the last best place, however, we are seeing change. Our state's population is rapidly increasing and tourism remains very, very high. It has never been more important to increase the numbers of troopers that help keep our state safe. We're hopeful that this increase in personnel will not only help combat this rise in violent crime and drug trafficking, but will help our law enforcement partners and keep our citizens safe. Thank you for your time. Chief Johnson. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for this opportunity um, to meet with you today. As the governor and attorney general indicated, my name is Lee Johnson. I'm the Investigations Bureau Chief for the Montana Division of Criminal Investigation. Um, I have the honor and privilege of overseeing our major crimes unit, which is nine field agents and one supervisor to cover the entire state. Um, over the last three years, we've seen um, much more violence in the type of crimes that we're working as far as homicides, officer-involved shootings, um, even our sexual assaults are becoming more prevalent and more violent in nature. Um, on average, we're looking at a 20% increase every year in caseloads. Just over the last three years, we've experienced a 45% increase in caseload, and that's with no staffing changes whatsoever. Um, the job of a DCI major crimes agent is not to go out and just gather evidence at a crime scene. That's really the beginning of the work. The work really begins once that evidence is gathered 
the NRA agents go back to their um, duty stations and build the case. It takes weeks, months, sometimes even years. Right now, we are in a crisis of responding from crime scene to crime scene. We've already had um, nine officer-involved shootings on the year. Um, if you look at a 10-year snapshot of officer-involved shootings, um, we've increased in comparison to other time periods over 300%. In 2012, we had three of them. In 2021, we had 25 of them across the state. So we're dealing with this crisis. Um, our officers are doing everything they can to apprehend um, the subjects, often violent subjects. And as you all know, three of our officers have been critically injured in those incidents this year. Um, so that is what we're responding to. It's a challenge every day. Um, I've been with DCI for 30 years and I've never seen anything quite like this in the recent years for what we're experiencing on this level. So um, we very much appreciate the efforts of the governor and the attorney general in leading the way um, to make public safety a priority in our state. And we ask for the legislature with our leadership and their representation to do the same. Thank you. So thank you, Attorney General, uh, Colonel, and Chief for uh, giving us the details on exactly what you're facing out there. And uh, you have our prayers and, and uh, for, for the work you do to keep us safe. Uh, before I close, I want to mention one other thing. Um, while we crack down on criminals peddling dangerous drugs, we're also focused on expanding access to treatment and recovery. Our budget permanently funds eight proven effective drug courts throughout the state that are losing federal funding. Instead of turning our backs on those struggling with addiction, we're investing in hope and opportunity as we get clean, sober, and healthy. Let's get this done. And after decades of previous administrations applying Band-Aids and kicking the can down the road, we proposed a really a generational investment of $300 million in behavioral health. Uh, Representative Keenan and Senator Esp are leading the effort in the legislature. With it, we'll repair the state hospital, improve patient services, and better secure the safety of patients and providers. And we'll also support expanded community-based behavioral health services. Uh, it's critical that we get these services back into the community where we can better care for these patients. Let's get this done. And to repair a lo another long neglected state facility, uh, our budget proposed investing nearly $200 million to repair and expand capacity at the state prison. Let's get that done too. I look forward to getting this funding over the finish line uh, for law enforcement, for treatment services, and safer and stronger communities. Uh, that's our goal, and that's why we're here today. So with that, again, thank you, Attorney General, Colonel Lavin, Chief Johnson, and we'd be happy to take a few questions if there are any. Yeah, um, so I understand the Senate finance has been committed yesterday in a three order uh, major contracts to get back into, the, uh, into HB2. Um, have either of you been in contact with the Senate President to try to uh, see the budget of the staff and ensure um, to get to that level of full time? Yeah, we absolutely have, Seaborn. Um, so we, we've been in pretty constant communication with legislative leadership, also with Senate financing claims. Uh, and, and look, it's, it's, it's ultimately Hospital 2 is going to have to go back to the House. It's going to have to get concurred in on the, on the House floor. Um, you know, very likely it's going to end up in conference committee. So those are definitely discussions we've had with uh, the appropriate committee chairs and with Senate leadership, House leadership. Um, uh, we're obviously very pleased that they did add in those three additional major crimes agents. That's huge for Lee and his bureau. I mean, as you heard, uh, they, that team does such fantastic work. But look, they are stretched to the absolute breaking point. They are running from crime scene to crime scene, from officer-involved shooting to officer-involved shooting, from Glasgow to St. Regis. That's a lot of real estate for 10 agents to cover. Uh, especially when, with, when there's as, as much of this stuff going on as there is. So three more, three more agents in that bureau is huge. And, and I, I want to thank Finance and Claims for getting that done. Uh, but with that said, that there's, there's certainly some more priorities that we have in there. Other questions? Yeah. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if you guys have a sense of where this disconnect between you guys and the appropriators and the legislators come from. 
And these are mostly the other conservatives who are killing these for private reasons. I heard Tom Gilbert said yesterday, bemoaning this out as a DOJ's request. 32 UFD, how could we possibly fund this? I, I guess I'm just wondering, I, I don't think those guys disagree with you on the state crime in the state. Where is this message is not going to come across? The can, I, can I be quick, Mr. Sure. Governor? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll defer to you. Well, so first of all, I want to say, um, I'm going to start by thanking Senator McGilvery because he's carried a couple of our amendments and put some of that stuff on, but I also want to correct. I mean, some of the numbers he's throwing out for our increase are just patently incorrect. And we've tried to make that clear through the appropriations process. I mean, a large number of those quote unquote new full-time employees that we've asked for at the Department of Justice aren't actually new FTEs. Those are, those are transfers that were supposed to come to us last session from the Department of Public Health and Human Services when we took over the Boulder campus. So I, I get a little annoyed and hot under the collar when I hear that number thrown out again and again and again to try to beat the Department of Justice about the head and shoulders. That's just inaccurate information. We've come with a very modest ask, 21. Given the, given the population increase, given the crime increase, I, I don't think that that is an astronomical number at all, especially when you look at where we're putting them. I mean, again, we're not asking for more bureaucrats in Helena. Um, I, I, I do think there's a bit of a disconnect. I mean, you, you've, got, you've got fiscally conservative legislators. I understand that. I used to be one. You know, I, I've been in that position. Um, but look, we've got an unprecedented budget surplus this year, and there, there's a lot of hands out. There's a lot of great ideas in how we can spend that money. I think the governor and I are on the same sheet of music. We think it should be spent on law enforcement, uh, but you know, legislators have other priorities. I don't want to speak to Mr. Governor. Yeah, so I, I think we have a good working relationship with the legislature. I mean, we've already put quite a few points up on the board with a billion dollars in tax-free funds, making the state debt-free. Uh, there's a lot of other wins we're gonna have here. Uh, we just have a little gap on law enforcement. So that's why we're here today to highlight the need, uh, let you, help us tell our story uh, about how overloaded some of these bureaus are and the need for additional troopers. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to reach a, a solution with the legislature. Any other questions? A quick follow up, just since you mentioned the prison uh, yesterday, we saw Section D acts the uh, money for the course of the contract in Arizona. I know correction wasn't really in support of that to begin with, but I'm wondering if I would personally uh, have an opinion on that appropriation, whether you think it's something that you're not going to see need for. Well, I mean, if we, we need to lock up violent criminals and get them off the street, uh, whether they're peddling drugs or committing violent crimes, and we don't have enough room in Deer Lodge because the can's been kicked down the road for decades. Uh, we need the prison cells. Uh, that was a decision originally that the legislature took to fund that, and now they're deciding not to do it. Uh, doesn't take away the need that we need some more cells. Any other questions? Yeah, um, so you mentioned that you want to Say for Montana and with this proposed budget, um, you know, how are you going to make that happen? Well, uh, we've highlighted a number of things. First, we need to make sure law enforcement has the resources uh, so that we can go after these drug dealers and get them off the street. We need the prison capacity uh, to lock them up so we don't have to just release them. But the other side of that, and I talked about it here today, it's important that for nonviolent uh, offenders, who are trapped in addiction, we need to get them into treatment. And that's why we've made a generational investment uh, in, the, in uh, mental health, behavioral health services. Uh, we also funded eight treatment courts, which uh, is actually costs less than a prison cell and leads to self-sufficiency to create, you know, to, to make someone a productive citizen again. I'm, I've always been so impressed with our treatment courts. It, it costs 10% of a prison cell and three years after graduation, 80% of the graduates are still sober and holding a job. That's a better outcome than locking somebody up if we can get them healthy, particularly for nonviolent offenders. Great, thanks for coming out today. Thanks. Thank you.